bienvenidos a este evento. Yo soy Angela Martínez y trabajo en la Comisión Africana como jefa de la Dirección Cultural. Sin más preámbulo, me gustaría invitar a Su Excelencia, el embajador Minata Sanmachi, comisionado para Salud, Asuntos Humanitarios y Desarrollo Social de la Unión Africana, para que nos pueda dar unas palabras iniciales. Comisionado, Excelencia. Bonsoir, uh, mesdames et messieurs, pour ceux qui n'ont pas leur micro, uh, je vais aller en français. Uh, je tiens à remercier les organisateurs de la session. Apparemment, il n'y a pas de traduction, me dit-on. C'est bien ça Il n'y a pas d'interprétation On nous avait dit qu'il y avait toutes les langues hier. Uh, Angela, can you check if uh, we have an interpretation? Because I will, I, I will go in French. Uh, the interpretation we have for this session is just English and Spanish. Oh my God. Uh, bonsoir. Uh, I would like uh, my speech is uh, in French, but I will try my English. I would like to sincerely thank the organizer of today's event. Uh, about uh, culture uh, for sustainable development. Development is very important for uh, Africa and uh, for African Union. I would like, uh, I want to insist on the historic of uh, culture and development uh, in general and especially in Africa. I will talk about uh, what UNESCO did bringing Uh, culture and uh, development which is very important and for us as African Union what did we do to put culture at the center of our development we have many uh, legal instrument I will start by our charter uh, or, uh, OAU uh, charter focus on culture and uh, we have a declaration Uh, conference of Accra in 1975, the Lagos Plan of Action, and uh, the, all these documents recognize the role, important role of culture to promote development in Africa. Uh, I, I would like to say we were at the beginning to say that culture is very important, I think. I want to make uh, UNESCO jealous but because we have this thing before uh, UNESCO, UNESCO decide to bring the issue of culture and development. I would like also to talk about our constitutive act. When we pass from OAU to AU, our constitutive act, act um, focus on the role of culture for the promotion and for protection of human rights, which include also development, uh, durable development. And we have uh, Agenda 2063. Agenda, our agenda focus on, uh, we have seven aspirations, and aspiration five uh, focus also of uh, our culture, how the culture can contribute uh, for the transformation and the development of Africa. You will ask me how, as African Union, we are implementing all this legal instrument. We sensitize our member state. We have legal instrument, and I will also talk about the charter. We have an important charter on Renaissance. I don't know if we call it, we say the Renaissance in English, We have this important document. We sensitize our member state to tell them culture is very important for the development and the necessity to include it in the plan of development of our country. In our side, our, as African Union Commission, we have uh, many instruments. We continue to develop instruments about uh, culture and development. We have uh, our plan of action of uh, cultural industries and creative and uh, initiative to focus on the role of culture, how the culture can bring more uh, income in terms of uh, development. And we have also our uh, commission on, of audiovisual. I don't know how you translate it. Uh, 
audiovisual uh, uh, commission and cinema. You know, cinema is very important in terms of income. I'm, I come from a country. Uh, it, we have a Facebook festival of cinema. I can tell you the contribution of cinema and the culture uh, for the development of, of our countries. We have, um, uh, the, to, to tell you the importance of our uh, culture, culture and development, our head of state decided in 2021 to focus on the role of culture for the development of Africa. We, it took us one year to think about it, what can be done? And we have a roadmap to implement uh, this uh, work plan uh, about the team of year. We did it and we continue, we are still continuing to, to do that one. And we have uh, three major plan of action and uh, plan project. We have um, a great museum. The museum, the contribution also of our arts for the development of Africa, the museum will be uh, a, in uh, Algeria, and we are, we are going for the operationalization of it. And we want to use also our culture to con confirm, to reinforce, to promote our uh, African identity, the heritage and the common value we have together. Without that one, we cannot do what we supposed to do for the development of Africa. It is very important for us uh, to, to be here and to share with you what we are doing as African Union and to say, uh, to say thank you to organizers and also uh, to UNESCO and to insist on the necessity for cooperation. We are doing as African Union, but we need also the support of uh, our partners and I would like to say uh, thank you to UNESCO and I won't forget to finish to say thank you to uh, the authorities of uh, uh, Mexico. We have a nice welcome yesterday and uh, it's well organized. I would like to say sincerely thank you to them on behalf of President Faki and myself as commissioner in charge of culture. This is, I have my speech in French, but I try my English. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Excellency, for those opening remarks. It's now an honor and pleasure to invite His Excellency Nati Mutetwa, the Minister of Sport, Arts and Culture of the Republic of South Africa, to deliver his statement. Excellency, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Your Excellency, uh, my sister Angela, uh, Jambo Africa. The ministers of culture with us here, uh, I'm sitting with my, my colleague here from Zambia, Minister of Culture, and other ministers of culture who are here, <coughs> uh, Excellencies, uh, AU, uh, uh, commissioners uh, who have opened this very important uh, meeting today for us to come together as, uh, as the continent. <clears throat> Aspiration five of uh, Agenda 2063, which my sister touched on, envisioned uh, an Africa with a strong cultural identity, common heritage, shared values and ethics. This calls uh, for an African cultural renaissance, which is preeminent, and that inculcates the spirit of Pan-Africanism, tapping Africa's rich heritage and culture to, to ensure that the creatives are major contributors of Africa's growth and transformation, restor restoring and preserving Africa's uh, cultural heritage, including its diverse languages. Consistent with the aspiration cited above and the deep appreciation of arts culture and heritage in promoting the objectives of Agenda 2063, the, the, the third summit of the AU heads of state and government declared 
last year, 2021, the year of arts, culture, and heritage, levers of building the Africa we want. <clears throat> Maybe let me take just a second there uh, uh, and dedicate it uh, to the late Bubaka, Ke uh, Bubaka Keita, the late president of Mali, who at the time was the champion of uh, arts, culture, and heritage uh, within the African Union. May his soul rest in peace. As a collective of ministers responsible for arts, culture, and heritage in our respective countries, we are expected, correctly so, to make a positive contribution in this effort of building a better Africa and a better world through the sector we lead. This will be done by strengthening cultural diplomacy, which I emphasize is the key to this reintegration and uh, regeneration uh, of, of, our, of our continent, where engagement in bilateral cooperation with each other and in multilateral fora within the continent and beyond. The Charter for African Renaissance, which again was touched on by my sister, is instructive on this matter. Article 3C and D states the following, and I quote, to promote an enabling environment for African peoples to maintain and reinforce a sense and will for progress and development. B, D, to preserve and promote the African cultural heritage through preservation, restoration, and rehabilitation. To this extent, uh, Honorable Commissioner, I would, I would actually, in the true spirit uh, uh, of African Renaissance, to urge all of us uh, as member countries and member states uh, to, to ratify this charter. Uh, it's important for all of us. Uh, if we are to be working together as a continent, we definitely have to ratify this, this chat. And turning to the issue of the, <coughs> of the cultural and creative economy, uh, I have just four points uh, which emanate from uh, our research arm, uh, our Department of Sport, Arts and Culture in the country. We realize that for us to navigate this space, this very important space of soft power, we need to be scientific. We need to be evidence-based, and in 2015, we, we established a research arm. And some of the things which come out of that uh, be, beyond uh, COVID-19 are the following. The first one uh, in promoting creative economy is the economic recovery and reconstruction plan. Job creation using the unemployment multiplier model. This program not only created jobs, but involves the skills transfer. Creatives are funded to create work and job for themselves. Two, creating an enabling environment on policy and regulatory framework. Through this intervention, we create spaces for the creatives to have platforms where they display their talent and wares. Three, reviving the sector through the monetization strategy. The focus of this priority area is on putting money in the pockets of the industry, helping the industry convert its assets into cash and turning their talents into revenue generating activities as a result of ownership of their intellectual property rights. Four, the enhancement of arts, culture, heritage, and sport tourism. The focus of this priority, of this priority area is on utilization of heritage sites to create jobs, whilst improving visitor experience through developing exhibitions in line with the draft agreement that will be signed by the Department of, of Tourism, that is the local uh, arrangement. This intervention is also inclusive of the promotion and marketing of world heritage sites and museum working with relevant departments and entities. The most important area uh, and, and key intervention in this priority area is the digitization. We believe that uh, this is what is going to 
be the future. The fourth industrial revolution is here with us. We have seen this during COVID-19, that uh, very many domains with, within these six domains uh, of the cultural and creative sector um, have been paralyzed, but some were able to survive. Audiovisual uh, is one such uh, domain which uh, survived. All these efforts we're making is to bring back the creative economy back to its pre COVID-19 times. This economy will only grow if we are evidence-based um, as Africa and innovative. So science for us should be very important in, in actually uh, dealing with this particular area. And I want to quickly touch on the issue of, of policy now, uh, on the restitu restitution of heritage resources. South Africa support and align herself with the work of the common African position and restitution of heritage resources. You'll recall, fellow ministers uh, and uh, uh, guests, that we insisted as South Africa in rehumanizing the remains of Sarah Bartman, a glass and Troy Pinar. The return of human remains highlight unique South African approaches and peculiarities to how we treat human remains as ancestors, not as objects. During the negotiations with the Austrians in 2012 for the return of Klaas and Troy Pinard, the delegation insisted that they be returned as human beings and not as museum objects in boxes. Rehumanization was an important theme in this project. The continental call is for all of us as Africans to allow Agenda 2063 to be central in all our efforts to build a better society. Therefore, everything we do as this collective must be in pursuance of the vision to address the challenges of peace, unemployment, poverty, and inequality. I therefore wish to thank the AU for many things. And one of the things I wish to thank the AU for is for AU to endorse the program we started in 2015 of celebrating Africa Month. The main thing is Africa Day, 25th of May. But we decided that the whole month have to be dedicated uh, to celebrate our Africanness as Africa. And therefore, for AU uh, uh, to the Pan-African uh, Cultural Congress of 2018 to endorse this means that our objective that it should move from one country to the next is going to be successful in fostering this unity amongst ourselves. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Excellency, for that insightful speech. Uh, without further ado, allow me to introduce our panelists for this session. Um, we had some challenges in bringing all of them, so two of them are going to make their presentations through video. That's Professor Emmanuel Dandaura on the status of the cultural and creative industries in Africa and its policy legislative framework. And also Mrs. Ayeta Wangusa on the markets for the cultural and creative industries in Africa and intellectual property rights, which is also going to be done in video. Then we'll have a sharing of experience by Mrs. Margarita Licata on the study on promoting decent work in the creative economy. Ms. Margarita is there from ILO. Then we have Mr. Mike Dada of the All African Music Awards to also share his experience in the promotion of the creative economy of music. Then we have another session which is with Mr. Ibrahima Khan on the common African position on restitution of heritage resources. Mr. Ibrahima Khan is from um, the Open Society Foundation. Professor Bokum, are you able to join us? <laughs> yes, please come to the podium. <laughs> so Professor Amadi Bokum will also 
uh, make an intervention on that. And unfortunately, as I mentioned, some of the speakers uh, couldn't join us due to various factors. Um, can you kindly assist us in having the first video from Professor Emmanuel Dandaura, please? Mrs. Margarita, please, if I could call upon you to share the Thank study that the, the African Union, UNESCO, and ILO did the on the promotion presentation via video. on the promotion of decent work in the creative economy. Over to you, please. Thank you very much. Can you all hear me? Yes. Um, thanks uh, to the African Union for making this uh, meeting possible. And I'm going just uh, for the sake of time and give you a little bit of a glimpse of, uh, of the study. Uh, the study was really trying to look at the challenges and opportunities in promoting decent work. So not just about employment creation, but also quality of jobs in the culture and creative economy in Africa. And is part of the ongoing collaboration that we have with the African Union and the UNESCO. So the scope was quite broad, uh, but what we did, we prepared uh, five country case studies uh, just to explore a bit the issues. Uh, and the country's case studies uh, reflected some subsectors that are particularly uh, prevalent or important uh, in, in the country. So we, we did uh, country case studies in DRC. Uh, we looked at, at the dance sector, uh, the cultural heritage in Egypt. Uh, we look at the film industry in Nigeria. And we look at the live music in South Africa and then the fashion sector in Tanzania. Uh, and I also wanted to say, I, I yet I was supposed to, to, to come here, yet as one of the co-writer of, uh, of this report. Now, bearing in mind that there are subsectoral differences, I just want to highlight some of the issues that we analyzed. Uh, first of all, yes, the culture and creative economy uh, in Africa is growing. Uh, it's becoming a big employment creator. Uh, also, thank you to digitalization. Uh, but there are some, still some issues. So the issues that we analyzed were around the uh, informal economy. There is still a high proportion of uh, people in the sector that are in an informal economy. Uh, this naturally means also irregular uh, income uh, high income insecurity. Uh, there are in some subsector, like for example the film industry, some issues with the safety and health standard. Uh, still some uh, gender pay gaps and gaps in general in equal opportunity for women and men. Um, and there are barriers to ensure, uh, someone spoke about the enabling environment, the enabling environment especially for small and micro enterprise that operate in the creative economy. How we can ensure that they can access business support, how we can ensure that they can access financial support. So we, we need to strengthen that aspect. And then maybe uh, quite important, especially for the ILO, is that not all the workers in the culture and creative economy do have access to adequate social security. Uh, for a number of reasons, the nature of the job, but also because they are not always recognized as workers uh, in some of the countries. Uh, and uh, maybe linking this to the Africa Union Plan of Action uh, for the culture and creative industry, we came out with some recommendation that could be maybe future action for collaboration with the African Union and UNESCO. Uh, first of all, uh, we need to capitalize on this huge youth employment potential that the creative economy has through uh, employment policy that talk to the cultural sector. We need employment policy for the cultural sector. We need the incentives to ensure that people can have access to the market, access to finance, uh, access to digital literacy. We need to work towards an extension of social protection to all uh, workers in the cultural sector, including, for example, self-employed workers. Some countries actually made strides on that, so it's possible. 
And there are also some regional issues there. Think about portability or transferability of uh, entitlement between one country and another. It's very relevant for people in the cultural sector that move from one country to another. And maybe last but not the least uh, is um, creating a regulatory framework uh, to address the issues of adequate remuneration for cultural workers, especially in the context of uh, a, this digital environment. We want to make sure digitalization is uh, a benefit for all and not just for few. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Mrs. Margarita, for sharing the study on promoting decent work in the creative economy and for touching really into issues that the revised AU Plan of Action on Cultural and Creative Industries refers to, uh, related to promoting um, decent work, also intellectual property rights, access to markets for the CCIs, amongst others. Now, Mr. Mike Dada, it's your turn, please, to share with the audience the initiative that we have to promote African music on the continent. Over to you, please. Thank you, Madam Angela. Um, okay, hold on, just a second. I'll, I'll give you the cue. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Your Excellencies, um, uh, Madam Commissioner for Health, Humanitarian uh, and Social Development. Thank you for um, putting this together. We partner with UNESCO and other partners to see what and all of that. Uh, Honorable Ministers present and uh, development partners and um, members in the hall. Thank you so much. I think I have limited time. So, and as such, uh, they say in media that the picture speaks more than 1,000 voices. I want to speak more, ask more than 1,000 words. So, and as such, I'll just, I have a two-minute clip just to show what this is all about. And I'll use the remaining one minute or two minutes to talk, share our experiences, challenges, and um, what we think the way to go. Uh, over to you. Maybe, I think you can do that now. Just to show you what Afrima is all about, what we call All African Music Award. It's the biggest music event on the continent. It broadcasts 24 countries around the world. To, and the objectives are simple. Integrate our people, communicate Africa to the world for the global competitiveness, exchange ideas. After that, I'll talk about it. Let's go. C'est pour le Bénin. Merci infiniment. This is the first time I see our in my continent. Fantastic. Now I'm a champion. You don't know. This is for Zimbabwe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, we did it. Swatchwan Africa. And we should use our voice for positivity and not segregation or separation. We say about languages. No DRC. Goes out to all the musicians in Ghana. This is for Ethiopia. To Africa to basically the vibe. I'm wearing the general by Nikita. Dance couture style by TLQ. Specifically for Africa. The product has to be right. Find yourself a radio station. Once you create interest, I'll chase you. We will hear about it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, because of limited time, I won't be able to enjoy it further. But I can share the link with you. Thank you so much. Uh, 
the question is, I know there are conferences around the world that um, hold every year, year in, year out, and the policymaker discuss. It's good to learn and unlearn and discuss and develop strategy and strategic plans. But we try to, as uh, cultural actors, we try to move to action to see what can we do to engage our people, really, the target audience. Um, you know more than I that Africa is, is the continent with the largest um, young people uh, on, on planet Earth. The question is, what are we doing to, with them? And if you want to engage them or talk to them, there are just few platforms. Is that that through CCI, Culture and Creative Industry, Spot? Maybe this is the technology. So the question is, how much are we spending, or what is the size of the budget of culture in most African countries or countries around the world? Your answer is as good as mine. So our experience has shown that uh, we've used Africa as a platform to unite people on the continent. Africa is not that simple, it's complex. Many languages, different colors, different people. So you can see in the video, uh, the collaboration among people, among young people. Then of course we use it to take people, young people away from the streets, create jobs, and uh, you know, and these are, because we're focusing on digitization, monetization, publishing, distribution, and uh, other sources of revenue for, through music for young people. And for instance, I had a meeting with the president of YouTube yesterday, um, and he was shocked when I told him that, if you don't know, in Gabon, they, they find it difficult to assess the YouTube platform for monetization for artists. And these are some of the things that we have tried to engage at so platforms to ensure that more people have access to such opportunities. This is our experience on the field. Uh, in addition to that, we use it to engender and promote peace on the continent. Because without peace, there can't be growth. There can't be businesses. There can't be collaborations. So, and the young people are at the center of all of this. Uh, and finally, on the objective, what we are trying to achieve as well is to communicate the strength of Africa for global competitiveness. We want partners across the world, we want people to work with either from Europe and America. We are not, Africa is no longer looking for it. What we want is partnership. And we want access to opportunity. And where those opportunities are not there, what we try to do at Africa is to do is to create them for our young people. So we move them, we move the Africa around the continent. That's our approach and that's our objective. And uh, we work with you, you have been very supportive uh, with the commissioner, Madam Angela, and the entire team to make sure that we democratize this asset and this idea because it belongs to the continent. And we also open up, we are open for collaborations with countries around the world because do it so that we can leverage cultural diplomacy, uh, cultural exchange for our people so that we understand one another more. One of the things, each time I would see meeting some of the MD of banks, they say, ah, Mike, we want to be involved and invest and finance, culture, and creative economy. But the question is, I've thought they don't understand it. They don't understand how it works. And that is more, and for an artist, if there are policies that protect IP, for instance, intellectual property, they don't need aid or support of government or fellow human beings when they die to start contributing for their family for barrier, as the case may be in most African countries or developing countries. So there are policies, when it comes to policies, that we like you to focus on in terms of protecting and promoting the IP of many cultural actors on the continent. So our experience has shown that, and what we have done is to broadcast, like I said, to 85 countries around, 84 countries around the world. It run from May to November, and um, a, lot of a lot of benefits have come to many African artists and performers. You can see in the video, you can see fashion, you can see videography, you can see music, and it's not only concert. We don't do concert. Concert, the idea of concert we use to leverage and communicate. What we do, we do have what we call African Music Business Summit. I know my time is running up. We discuss capacity building, we discuss the business side of music, we discuss monetization, publishing, distribution, royalties, and these are the things that can create wealth for our people, for our young people on the continent. Thank you so much. I'm sorry for, <laughs> for <laughs> taking much of my no. time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mike and Margreta, for really establishing the connection between theory and practice with regards to the promotion of cultural and creative industries on the continent. Now, we move on to another aspect of our session, which is the restitution of heritage resources and the combating of illicit trafficking of cultural resources on the continent. Mr. Ibrahim Khan, the floor is yours to speak a little bit about the initiative of the African Union and 
partners on the common African position on restitution of heritage resources, please. Thank you, madam. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for inviting us to share our perspective on these important issues of uh, restitution. Uh, many people think that uh, the issue of restitution started when uh, President Macron in 2017 has made the, the, the offer in Ouagadougou to restitute all the stolen artifacts that were in French museum. And then after uh, Benedict Savoy and uh, Felouin Sa prepared a report that contained a lot of recommendation on how restitution should be. In fact, that was not when it started. It started with uh, the voice of an African who was uh, director general of uh, UNESCO, uh, Amadou Maktarmbao, and who in 1978 made a very passionate appeal to the whole world uh, to consider restituting heritage of significance and value to people who made and shared them. And Bo said, I quote, one of the noblest incarnations of people's genius is its culture heritage built over the centuries. And people have been robbed of a, this priceless portion of inheritance in which their enduring identities find its embodiment. That was the basis of the claim. And then, you know, uh, people like Sheikh Anta Job, uh, the former uh, activist and professor who made also the claim about the restitution. Ngungi Wachongo also made this restitution. So it's those efforts that led to this idea of restituting stolen. But in Africa, the idea is not stolen artifacts, it's stolen heritage resources. Why? Because we are not just talking about artifacts, but we are also talking about human remains, libraries, archives, object, archaeological and paleontological collection, and many other specimens that Africa have always claimed but have not been given to us, but have not been restituted. And why that claim is made? It's because, as I, Amadou Maktamba rightly said, heritage resources of a community express their intellectual, technological, educational contribution to human civilization. The process of creation of those resources provide the basis of intergroup relation, integration, and socialization. So what we have been robbed of is really an important element for sustainable development of Africa as this conference is calling for. So that's why under the leadership of the African Union, uh, a number of African intellectuals led by uh, George Abungu that you all know and Felwin Sa was called by uh, the African Union to start developing a document that will, con the, 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 that will be the common African position on this. And why are we talking about common African position on these issues? It's because Africa has already put in place a number of mechanisms, a number of systems that should lead to that restitution. First, uh, the Constitutive Act of the African Union requires member states to achieve greater unity and solidarity between African countries and the people of Africa. This object will really help to strengthen that one. Another element that we can add will be the Agenda 2063, which, uh, where African countries want the continent to be a to, to have a strong identity 
a cultural identity, common heritage, values, and ethics that will call for an African cultural renaissance which will inculcate the spirit of Pan-Africanism and ensure that the cultural and creative industry in Africa are a major contribution to African growth and transformation. This is also an element that we need to include in the work that people are doing. And African countries have adopted a number of treaties, the African, uh, the Charter for African Cultural Renaissance, the, which was revised in 2006, uh, the African Charter on Human and People's Rights, which, which is also calling for African country to do everything uh, that will help to, uh, to make the virtue of their historical tradition and the value of the African civilization as the mean that will inspire and characterize the reflection of African countries on human and people's rights. So all these elements are very important for the production of uh, the African common position. And I will add that all the treaties that were adopted under the UN, the UN system, the, to the UNESCO to 1970 uh, convention, the UNESCO 2000, all of those and the UNITRA uh, uh, 1995 uh, also convention are limited in helping African state to, 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 to get this uh, uh, object restituted. And that's why African countries now have a common determination to cooperate uh, with others uh, to really help to meet the aspiration of, of African people who want to see brotherhood and solidarity reinforced by uh, the return of those uh, elements. And uh, African countries, therefore, really want to have a number of elements that they will put together and that will constitute uh, the pillars of their action to get this object to be restituted. And I will give the floor to uh, my colleague, uh, Amadi Bokum, to explain to you what are those pillars and why those pillars are really important to really help us to get this object restituted. I thank you for your attention. Merci beaucoup, Ibrahima. Merci, Angela. Je, je, je découvre un peu tout de suite que je dois parler, mais je le fais avec, euh, avec beaucoup de plaisir. Euh, on m'a demandé de dire quelques mots sur la position commune africaine euh, qui euh, gravite essentiellement autour de six points. Je vais essayer euh, d'y aller assez rapidement. Le premier point a trait à la gestion des collections qui vont retourner. Parce que les collections commencent à arriver et on nous dit souvent où est-ce que vous allez les mettre. Euh, la question peut paraître pertinente, mais en réalité, euh, elle n'a aucun sens. Euh, ces objets, quand on les prenait, ils n'étaient pas dans des collections de musées. Ils étaient des objets de la vie courante, ils étaient des objets rituels, ils étaient des objets décoratifs, ils étaient des objets votifs, ils étaient des objets festifs. C'est là-bas qu'on leur a donné une nouvelle identité en disant que c'est ça le patrimoine africain. Je vous dirai jusqu'à présent, enfin, à la fin de mon propos, pour en quoi cela est faux. Mais le retour simplement, je pense que quand on rend à quelqu'un ce qu'on lui doit, parce que restituer, restituer c'est remettre à son propriétaire légitime, il ne faut pas lui dire où est-ce qu'il va amener l'affaire. On peut l'amener dans nos musées, on peut les remettre dans les milieux de culte. On peut décider, de, décider qu'ils sont pollués et les détruire. C'est notre droit. Donc, qu'on ne nous dise pas qu'est-ce qu'on va en faire. Le deuxième point qui est abordé, c'est la question de l'éducation des populations, notamment des jeunes, par rapport à ces questions. Ça peut être une question complexe, parce que probablement ces objets vont revenir dans certains cas dans des milieux où il n'y a presque plus aucune entité liée à eux. Cela voudra dire 
qu'il y aura un problème de réinterprétation et de réintégration. Ça ne veut pas dire qu'ils vont continuer à jouer les mêmes fonctions qu'ils ont jouées dans le passé. On connaît aujourd'hui des exemples d'objets qui sont retournés et qui causent énormément de problèmes parce qu'on sait qu'on doit faire un effort de réinterprétation, peut-être de resacralisation pour leur donner une nouvelle place dans la société. Mais la jeunesse et la diaspora sont des cibles prioritaires pour euh, l'Union africaine. Parce que finalement, si ce patrimoine qui va nous revenir est quelque chose que nous avons reçu en héritage, il ne faut pas oublier que les anciens, quand ils parlent de patrimoine, ils parlent toujours de tradition à côté. Et la tradition est définie comme étant ce qui mérite d'être transmis. Est-ce que les jeunes aujourd'hui en Afrique vont se reconnaître à travers les objets qui vont revenir La réponse n'est pas évidente. Il faudrait penser la question et il faudrait voir quels sont les différents angles d'attaque et quels sont les langages avec lesquels on va adresser la jeunesse pour qu'on puisse faire une réappropriation de cela, si réappropriation il doit y avoir. Donc la jeunesse est un facteur important. Il faut qu'on puisse parler son langage, il faut qu'on puisse se mettre à son niveau, il faut probablement qu'on puisse inventer une nouvelle didactique pour faire de telle sorte que tout cela puisse être en harmonie. Bien évidemment, qui parle de nouvelles didactiques, parle de médias et parle d'une certaine manière de la société civile. Et vous voyez toute la révolution aujourd'hui qu'il y a au niveau des médias. Des questions d'ailleurs, comme Mbou avait posé dans les années 80, avec le nouvel ordre mondial de l'information et de la communication, qui lui a coûté ce que cela lui a coûté. Mais les résultats sont aujourd'hui là. Les médias, les réseaux sociaux ont pris possession pratiquement du cerveau, pas seulement des jeunes africains, mais de tout le monde. Il faut qu'on puisse entrer dans ce type de langage et pouvoir leur parler dans ce langage-là. Si on ne fait pas, c'est perdu. Mais moi, je suis très optimiste pour l'Afrique. Parce qu'il y a quelques années encore, quand on veut recueillir une tradition orale, on partait avec son magnétophone, on faisait un enregistrement, on faisait une transcription, on faisait une traduction, on faisait une édition et on faisait seulement après une diffusion. C'était le règne de Gutenberg. Aujourd'hui, l'oralité a pris sa revanche sur l'écrit. On peut, à partir de n'importe quel coin d'Afrique, parler au monde entier sur une expression culturelle vivante. Donc cela, il faut qu'on en tire tous les avantages. Autant nous sommes faibles dans ces réseaux en termes de contenu, autant il y a un potentiel incroyable, parce que c'est une véritable revanche des cultures de l'oralité sur Gutenberg. À côté, il y a la société civile. Elle est très importante. Elle est peut-être une interface essentielle entre les publics, les officiels et le reste. Mais quand on dit qu'une question représente une alternative, une alternative, c'est toujours deux termes. Il peut y avoir le meilleur et le pire. Cela veut dire aussi que la société civile n'a pas le droit de dire et de faire n'importe quoi. La société civile doit accepter que les autres ont le droit d'avoir une opinion sur la société civile. C'est quand il y aura ce dialogue-là, cet aller et ce retour, je pense, qu'on va essayer de trouver un juste milieu entre tous ces acteurs. Il restera, et c'est une question qui est très importante, celle de la coopération. La coopération qu'il y aura entre l'Afrique et les détenteurs des collections, elle est multiple, elle sera politique fondamentalement, et sera aussi scientifique, et sera culturelle, et sera aussi financière. Mais je pense que l'aide au retour des objets en Afrique ne doit pas avoir la même signification que certains types d'aides qu'on a connues et qu'on appelait aides au développement qui ont fini par des ajustements. Là, c'est le receleur qui rend quelque chose. Quand on a pris quelque chose à quelqu'un, pour ne pas dire volé, quand on rend, on doit être modeste. Et dans le droit positif, on doit rendre les dommages aussi. Et je crois que le débat qu'il y aura présentement et dans le futur entre nous et nos collègues, 
sera un dialogue polysémique. Il faut qu'on trouve de bonnes pratiques qui feront que les objets qui vont retourner ne seront pas dans une perspective de dépouiller les collections ou les musées européens des collections africaines. Par ailleurs, ces objets peuvent être de très bons ambassadeurs de la culture africaine. Il faut qu'on trouve les justes milieux, il faut qu'on trouve les bonnes articulations pour que ces retours ne soient pas des déchirements pour les uns et des fardeaux insupportables pour les autres. Il me reste une minute. Bien donc, dans la minute qui me reste, je dis que le retour peut être porteur d'un danger important pour l'Afrique. Vous savez, ces objets, on les a pris à des communautés. Ces objets, ils ont suivi le tracé de Berlin qui a fragmenté territorialement l'Afrique, qui a fragmenté aussi les continuités culturelles. Alors, les objets pris à des communautés vont être rendus à des États. Si on reste exclusivement dans cette logique étatique, on aura contribué à berliniser le patrimoine culturel africain et cela me paraît absolument inacceptable. Merci. Thank you, Mr. Khan and Professor Bokum for, for sharing that experience and the work that we are doing on restitution of heritage resources. Excellencies, distinguished guests, we are running short of time, but we are happy to receive one or two comments from the flow or questions. Very quickly, please, if there are any burning issues. Ministers? Yes, please. Can you, can someone give the microphone? Very briefly, please. We are okay. running short of time. Thank you. Bonjour, je me présente d'abord. Je suis Youssef Riyara, directeur du patrimoine culturel du Royaume du Maroc. J'ai deux... Petit point que je voudrais juste commenter à l'issue de ce que je viens d'entendre. D'abord, sur la position unique et solidaire des pays africains, je crois qu'il y a un aspect qu'il faudrait aussi toucher à cela. Je crois que la position, elle est là, théoriquement. Donc, tous les pays africains sont d'accord sur cet aspect-là. Mais je crois qu'il y a un aspect très important et pertinent. C'est une sorte de mise à niveau des différents pays africains. Rien qu'en voyant les conventions internationales, par exemple, qui, sont, qui ont trait à cet aspect, on voit qu'il y a euh, des différences. Il y a des pays qui ont ratifié, d'autres qui ne l'ont pas fait. Ça, c'est un premier point. Deuxième point, ce sont les ressources humaines nécessaires. Je crois qu'il y a aussi une différence entre les différents pays de, qui découlent du premier. Je crois qu'il devrait y avoir une sorte de mise à niveau général, qui est le soubassement de cette solidarité africaine pour réclamer la restitution des objets. Ça, c'est un premier constat. Le second... Je serai très bref. C'est un peu le cadre... Euh, on a toujours buté dans le cadre des conventions internationales ou bien dans le cadre des conventions bilatérales sur un aspect. C'est-à-dire qu'on s'est limité aux aspects juridiques et administratifs. Et on a oublié un aspect qui est très important, qui est l'aspect éthique. Je crois, je retiens de l'intervention de M. Hamad Iboukoum, un très grand et cher ami, euh, euh, L'affaire de restitution en Afrique, c'est très original, c'est très typique. Je crois qu'il y a un aspect moral qu'il faudrait entre, faire euh, actionner aussi dans le cadre de cette restitution. Il y a des, des objets qui ont une signification euh, culturelle, euh, sacrée sacré parfois. Donc il faudrait aussi tenir compte de cet aspect-là, parce qu'il ne s'agit pas d'un objet qui a une valeur... Sir. Mais pas... please wrap up, please. Je, I'm sorry to je, je termine cet aspect-là, je crois, éthique, qu'il faut le prendre en considération dans le rapport de restitution. Et merci. I'm sorry, we cannot take any more questions, but I'll ask Mr. Ibrahim to quickly respond to the delegate from Morocco. Quickly, one minute, please. Well, I think what he said is uh, really important uh, uh, as a contribution, and I think the common position precisely take into consideration that aspect. We didn't, we had only three minutes to go through all the different elements. But what you are saying is already in the common position. And the idea of the common position is to really strengthen African countries in their claim and also make sure that Africa talk as one. 
with the rest of the world. Because if we continue Benin, Togo, Nigeria, it won't be good for us. We have to be together, to have a common approach to issues, raise the issues in the same way so that nobody can come and find, you know, between those gaps, issues that and divide us. Unity is important, and the role of this uh, common position is really to strengthen that unity. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Excellencies, once again, I apologize. We are running short of time. As we conclude, I would like to call upon His Excellency, Mr. Nati Mutetwa, Minister of Sport, Arts and Culture of the Republic of South Africa, to give us his final remarks. Excellency, please. Well, thank you very much, uh, Your Excellency. I think that uh, much and ma many of the areas have been covered uh, today. The message is one. For us to be united, we need to actually stick to the unifying perspective. The tools are there within the AU. Let's utilize them. But I also want to say that the time should come for Africa not to be a begging bowl. If we create our own initiatives like the African Wealth Heritage Fund, we should not seek funding from elsewhere because if they do that, they then are going to dictate terms of what should happen. Let's fund our own, let's strengthen ourselves and be able to make our own voice heard across the world. Thank you very much. Thank you, Excellency. Now, finally, finally, Excellency Minata, your turn to just close the session. Thank you. Uh, as we are running out of time, I would like to say thank you. Thank you sincerely to ministers in the room. I saw many of them attending this important session for us. And we listen about uh, brilliant presentation. I would like to say thank you. I want you to clap the end for them. And, and uh, just to say thank you and see you tomorrow. We have another session tomorrow. And uh, bonne soirée à chacune et chacun. Et merci d'être venu, et particulièrement au ministre qui était là cet après-midi, et l'ensemble des participants et les panélistes. On a bien pris bonne note de ce que vous avez dit. Particulièrement, mon frère ministre d'Afrique du Sud parle de fond. Il a parfaitement raison. On parle de solutions africaines aux problèmes africains. African solution, African problem. On doit se donner les moyens et je compte sur chacun des ministres pour commencer d'abord en interne, à l'intérieur, inside our country, to create fund for that. And at African Union, we will assist you, we will accompany you to mobilize funds for that. It is very important for the development of Africa. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you for the participation. And let's continue with the conversation. Thank you. And apologies for running through the session. Thank you. Thank you.